one of your best memories about over in theater would be uh best memories oh man i must say i don't know if i got just one but i'll say just the camaraderie with my team that that's the you know just doing everyday stuff with my team and you know just knowing the fact that all of us made it out of there you know with no issues you know, came close <laughs> a few times but all of us made it out of there with no issues so i guess just really much at the end of the day when it was everybody get ready bunkered down we all in this huge tent and everybody just kind of bonding that that i would say those are some of my best memories right there and well i i, I said like i tell most people that I talk to, you won't get a tighter family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Than yeah. the guys that you've served with in the military, especially when you've been down range. Yeah, yeah. And I also say that, you know, the United States can actually learn from that. Yeah. Especially of the things that are going on. With yeah, them. what's going on now? They can definitely because there was not any dominant color over there at that tent. <laughs> There's a mixture of everything over in there. And you can and, and the thing about it is that mixture yeah. of everything can get along mm -hmm. just fine. So I propose and and I believe I'm writing this and, and proposing this. Once you get out of high school, everybody needs to at least do four years of military service. Yeah, and because that would actually teach you, you know what I'm saying, one lot. Discipline, respect, mm -hmm. and to get along with everybody. Once you get into the military. It's no dominant color, I'm telling you. It's no matter where you go, you got a mixture of everything. So yeah. Yeah, you will so, learn how to get along because you need those people. You know what I'm saying? You know. So, with that, with that, okay, I think that was your first tour that you went on that you just talked about. Yeah, that was the first one. Yeah, so I went on a bunch. I went on a bunch more tours, you know. Um, I'll give you just one story. One, I'll give you two stories, actually. One, so this was later on at the end of the tours I went on. This one, Iraq, was kind of built up. You know, you had everything. You had, the, the, not, the Americans, the military had everything they needed over there. So everything was good, getting a little better at this time. Yeah. So I remember I was sitting on this 10-foot pallet. We had a five crew of females coming over for the first time, right? So I'm sitting. We, we had commandeered this building that had, with, about two weeks ago, was just blown up by the Marines. That's how they know you know, yeah. <laughs> so what we did, we went in there to that building and kind of built it back up. Yeah. You know, put in some wood where the windows was and a whole bunch of stuff, you know, kind of secured the, the openings and stuff. Now, again, we're out in the middle of the desert, pretty much, you know. So we secured this building, but the building had like a little garage area. And that's where we kept our five ton, uh, five ton and two and a half ton trucks. You know. So we, I'm sitting in the garage area on a pallet. I said this pallet is almost like 10 feet in the air. I'm just sitting there. Of course, got a ladder or whatnot. Yeah. So I'm just sitting there, cooling out, drinking me some lemonade. Everybody kind of cooling out. It's about 110 outside. <laughs> this this crew of female, and we knew them. You know, they were from Robbins Air Force Base. We knew them. So they can they pull up, and the five tons come pull up, and we sit near to put five tons pulls up right in front of us, and we all time we might have a hat on back. I'm just sitting here looking at them. You know. And I'm thinking to myself, I wonder how they're going to take this, because I know, I mean, we can barely take it. I know these females about to trip. <laughs> <laughs> I know these females about to the, every All five of the females got out of the truck. The dudes that were driving the truck got out, and they didn't just put their bag in there. They were, poof, throwing their, <laughs> <laughs> throwing their bags over. Their bags fell. The females took one look at that, um, that building we commandeered. And one of my homeboys like, hey, ladies, welcome home. And all five of them started crying. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they took a look. This is where home is for like the next nine months. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> all but, of them start crying. <laughs> but, I don't know. I guess, well, I always said this about the Air Force. You know what I'm saying? Out of, just about out of all the military, y'all are the most plush living old that would tell you about that. See, 
the fifth, where I was in the fifth combat communications. There's only three combat units in the Air Force. One is here at Robbins, one is in Oklahoma, and one is in Germany. That's it. Everybody in the Air Force is the regular Air Force. We're not. <laughs> <laughs> they don't call it. That's exactly what in the Air Force they say. In combat com, you are not regular Air Force. You might as well be Army. Okay, I can feel that. I mean, <laughs> because, well, yeah. I didn't know the Air Force that I knew over there. You know what I'm saying? They get down. Oh, yeah. Now, they see, got down. If I was with the regular Air Force, if I wasn't in combat com, I would have been living in a five-star hotel over there. And I hated You know what? And we hated y'all. You know what I'm saying? We hated y'all. I would have been in a five-star hotel. And I've told this story before. We, the yeah. first time that I actually went, I went to Langley Air Force. Uh-huh. And, and I hated y'all. I hated y'all down Oh, that thing off the chain. I was looking around, I'm like, what kind of mess is this? Lucky. Like, we lucky. That's yeah. everywhere, too. I'm telling you, that's everywhere. Every every Air Force base is going to be just like that. And I'm like, our even facilities are straight trash garbage yeah. compared. These guys are getting damn near five-star restaurant treatment yeah. Yeah. at their facilities. Where if we're lucky if we don't get sand in our eggs in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you the difference, man. One time, this was when I was regular Air Force. I wasn't here at Robbins. I was um, in Bahrain. Now, Bahrain is a, is an island right off of Saudi Arabia. I love Bahrain. Plush. Very plush. I love Bahrain. Yeah. So I was I did like nine months over in Bahrain. So anyway, when I got, I was an E-3 when I got there. I was an E-3. Here. Do you know yeah, it's a uh, airman first class? Okay. So do you know that I was living in a five star studio condo on the twenty fifth floor, and I had my own car. That's <laughs> good. Matter of fact, this was all base. It wasn't even on the base. I was living. I was living in town of Bahrain. The only the, the closest I came to living like that was Rota, Rota, Spain. Uh huh. Road to Spain, that's the closest yeah. I came to live like that. And I still didn't get a car. Oh, I had my own car and everything, man. I was outside the base, but I had to walk because it was yeah. a walking distance of the base. And I at least didn't have to pay, but it wasn't no daggum oh, man. hotel with the daggum. I was living plush. I was like, guys, plush. I'm like, why is it? And, and the thing about it, most of the military, we hate y'all. <laughs> I know, I know. We was like, why are we living like yeah. this? And they are like eating steak and lobsters. I'm gonna give you another example. It's like one of my it's one of my later tours, right? So um, we're all over there. And of course, now this now this kind of got to us, and we are Air Force. We live in tents. Well, see, we don't have no AC units or nothing, so we gotta lift the flaps. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We lift the flaps to get our AC and stuff, and then of course, you know, in, in, in Iraq, where in any, any desert you go to. Once the sandstorms come through, you're done. You got to close flaps and, and bunker down. Yeah. So, you know, you never know when a sandstorm will come. But anyway, the regular communications, another communication. So, so what we used to do, we used to go in and, and stand up calm, get everything ready, and, you know, be on the front line, getting ready for them. Mm -hmm. And then once, we're, once we get everything good, then the regular Air Force communications come in, uh, squadrons come in, <laughs> and then we go. We go to the next spot and do it again. So anyway, the regular Air Force come in and they are intense with AC units. <laughs> and we sitting here like, what in the world is this? So we sit there like, what? Oh, we Air Force too. Well, you know, we, this is for us. We brought this for our squadron, but we're Air Force though. They wouldn't even give us no AC unit. Guys, man. You know, we out there living in 110. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. With the flaps up. This you know, <laughs> that is the first story that I heard where Air Force actually got a big taste of yeah. what we went through. I mean, even today, 5th Combat Com still doing it today. Damn. Luckily, there are no wars going on right now, but if there's a war, them cats right back out there. Here's a good question. Did you ever come in contact with any of the PJ? PJs, what's that? That's the uh, special ops in the uh, Air Force. The, the special. Pyramid. Man, I came in contact with them special ops dude. Them are some special, crazy dudes. <laughs> I'm you can't even talk to them. Them dudes won't even talk. Them, those dudes, I mean, I came across this one dude. This dude looked like he was ready to kill you at any moment. 
Well, okay. <laughs> so let me. This dude, crazy. Wait, what branch was he in? For, he was in. He, he was either army or he was marines. One of the two. If he was. Four nah, four. nah. You know what? I think that dude was a seal. There was a team of seals out there. Okay. So that dude was a seal. Let, let me let me let me uh break that down. If you, I know, I don't know if you've seen that show, Seal Team. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In the real world. They are nothing like that. Okay. They, they are not that cool at all. Yeah, they yeah, are yeah, not. Yeah. They they actually have a guide complex. But rightfully so, because a lot of the stuff that they go through just to become Yeah, them, yeah. I understand that. I understand. So that. they got a guide complex about Sorry, it. I don't know that. Oh, that's Alexa. That's Alexa. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> but they do, they have a guide complex about them because of what they've been through. But yeah. me personally and my mouth and how it works is, yeah, I'm gonna knock you down a peg or two because yeah, those, real, guys, real, those guys are something else. But when you talking about, and the one thing that I will give the seals, and I've had this debate with a lot of people that, to me, to be honest with you, in our branch of service, that is the cream of the cream. Like, yeah, you, yeah. you won't get no higher than yeah. that. Yeah, I, I agree, I agree. But, a close second, which a lot of people don't know because, well, you hear about Force Recon Marines mm -hmm. and you hear about Night Stalkers as far as the Army go. But what a lot of people don't know is the PJs yeah. in the Air Force. Yeah. I put them at a close second. I've never second. met any of them. I've never met any of them. You talking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you PJs are pretty much bred to go behind enemy lines every day freaking time yeah during the chaos that's that's yeah. what they do and the only reason i don't really put them on par with the seals is because like biggest of the time their their entry into it most of the time it's gonna be from the air mm -hmm. whereas the seals you know what i'm saying they coming in from a different yeah room, all different yeah. kind of way yeah but them pjs guys yeah i never met one like i said i just i met that seal though like i said that dude was a brother man that dude if you even say hi to him, he just gonna stare at you. He just gonna look. <laughs> I'm serious. This dude was, he was gone. You know what I'm saying? But he would talk to his teammate, his his member, his team. But nobody else outside of that. Yeah, it's close. Like, yeah, nobody okay. else outside of that. Like, with okay, like with your uh, with the combat, come in, come come. Mm -hmm. come. I guarantee you, y'all are just that tight knit. Same oh yeah, as, we were tight knit. Yeah. Same with special Very ops. Tight, yeah. So with special ops, you you ain't really finna fool with nobody except for special yeah. ops. That's just what it is. Yeah, them, them, yeah, them dudes, is, them dudes are something else. I, I appreciate them. <laughs> <laughs> also, hopefully, hopefully, um, your daughter, she joined the uh, armed forces. Uh, armed forces. She, awesome. Yeah, she wanted. She's in security forces. So, so she, yeah, she wanted to do oh. some kind of combat stuff. I said, hey, oh. do what you gotta do, baby girl. Go, go for what you know. Okay. okay. So she's security she, forces. So she want to get it in. All okay. right. Um, <laughs> well, I hope she does see this video. Yeah. So, um, and this will go to any young member, uh, thinking about joining the, uh, the armed forces. So if you were to talk to them, what, sorry, phone, sorry about that. but if you were to talk to them, what advice, well, what advice did you give your daughter? Um, when she talked about going to the armed forces, my advice to my daughter was: my daughter had a, about a million, billion, trillion questions to ask me because she was venturing off into some unknown land. She was going to a whole new stage of life she was never used to. First eighteen years, she grew up at home. Mm -hmm. Now she's getting ready to go off on her own into a whole other world out, big world out here. So she had a billion questions for me on that. Had a billion questions for me on the air force, and. Pretty much, I kind of summed it all up, and I pretty much told her, you know, you're a grown woman now. You know, you got to go out there and make your mark in life. If you never step out there, make your mark, you never know if you can't make your mark. You never know what you can do. But you got to get out there and try. You know, and if you want to join the military, go ahead. You got four to six years to see if that's going to work out for you, see what you're going to do. And if not... You can get out the military with honorable um, discharge, 
and you're fine. Get you another job, you're fine. At least during those four to six years, you would have picked up a whole bunch of skills. You got a whole bunch of experience, and you're good to go. You can come out and land a job real quick. But you got to plan for your future, and doing that will not require you to just stay at home. I can agree with that. I can agree with that. So, for anybody who's thinking of joining the military, any uh, <laughs> young cat out there, um, now you don't know them. Yeah, yeah. So, as far as going into the armed forces, I would say do your research on the branches. You know, do some research first and try to pick the branch that best fits you. You know, if you, for example, if you're the type that's, you know, you worried about like war, going to combat, you know, don't join the Marines. Don't join the Army. Join the Air Force. Just don't do combat communication. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys should join the Navy also. Yeah, so I was just about to mention that. Yeah. If, you, if, you, if you not worried about being at sea, you know, join the Navy, but just note that if you join the Navy, you will see some sea time. Oh, you're going to see a lot of sea time. <laughs> you you the will Navy. see some sea time in close quarters. Unless, close quarters. unless if you go CBs in the Navy, which that would be the equivalency like the Army yeah. the inside the Navy. Mm -hmm. You go CBs, then you're not going to see no war. Yeah. The only other thing is, well, but special ops, but you're going to see water with special yeah. ops, especially yeah. if you're you going to see a lot of water with special ops. <laughs> or if you go swick. And let's, let's actually give it up to my man, Jordan. That is, we have a member in our Rough Rider chapter, his name is Shades. He has a son that just went to the academy. He's graduated from the academy, where is it at? I think it's out in Denver, Colorado, or something like that, from Naval Academy. He is now on his way to be a Navy SEAL. So I'm gonna give it up to Jordan. Mad props, Jordan. Oh, I, I did not know that. Yeah, he's, I did yeah, not he's know in that. Navy SEAL school. Ooh, he's <laughs> gonna catch all kind of heck. Give it up to Jordan. Yes. My man, Jordan, he real cool. Yeah, I did. Guys, y'all, he's gonna catch it. Yeah. Hell, okay. Hell we in itself is exactly what they call it. Mm -hmm. Hell. Yeah. So I've seen it on TV. You talk in yeah, I've seen them maybe TV. an hour to two hours a day of sleep, and that's for a whole week. Yeah. Other than that, you are up getting the ass kicked out of you. Yeah. So well, I give it up to him. Going, he's going, he's getting ready to go through it. I give it up to him. Much props. Yeah. Good luck. Um, and he's an officer. Stay. Oh, man, yeah. they're going to do him. He's an officer. Oh, so, they're going to do him. They're saying he just graduated Church. from the academy. So he's an officer. So, to the seals. so he gonna already be over there if, if they still do it like if I remember correctly, he is already over there getting done up something properly before the enlisted guys get there. Okay. Because officers are first. You know okay. What I'm so yeah. he's I think he's a he's a lieutenant. So if he make it, if he make oh, he's gonna make it. Yeah, he's gonna I ain't gonna say if. Yeah. When he makes it, you know what I'm saying? I will say congratulations to him. I did not know that. I'll let you know. Congratulations, Shades. Hit me up about that because, you know what I'm saying, that is something that I would like to know. Yeah. And, and, and you know what I'm saying. Cool dude, if you ever met him, you yeah. never know he was like a seal. You never, you think he was just the coolest young dude ever. You never know he was a seal. I'm glad. Hopefully, yeah. he don't get that guy <laughs> complex. I'm yeah. hoping. But off of what he going to go through, Very respectful dude. Very respectful. Um, But I'm glad I got to know that. Yeah. But. In closing, because you know I'm saying the video probably has yeah. gone on for a little good for a hot minute. Is there anything else you want to put out there to people, like I say, who want to join? Or like I said, if you want to join the military, do your research first. Pick the best branch for you, and just know that when you join the military, nothing is ever permanent. Nothing is permanent. You're always going to move. Things are going to always change. So just know that. You gotta accept change if you're going to join the military. You gotta accept it. You gotta deal with it because it's going to happen. All right. So we're gonna close off here. I want to thank everybody for joining the channel. Um, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell. And if you have any questions about what we talked about, or if you have any questions for, uh, what was your rank when you got out? Before I E6. E6. I got out. Yeah, I got out as an E6. Staff sergeant. Tech. Tech Technical sergeant. sergeant yeah. Okay, so in, in the Army, it's Staff Sergeant. Yeah. Okay, but if you have any questions for Tech Sergeant King, 
Uh, <laughs> he heard that name in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Leave a comment below. You know, you know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure that he would he wouldn't mind talking to any of you or answering any questions that you have as far as the military go or you know, you never know, you might get a couple of stories out of them. No doubt. But don't forget to subscribe, like, hit the notification bell. We love you out there. Rough riders. All day. <laughs> One. <laughs>